Sometimes regulations are a bit confusing. SpaceX is going to save two NASA astronauts stranded in space. It's because Boeing's trouble Starliner spacecraft is not safe enough to bring them home. However, instead of fining Boeing for that, the FAA fines SpaceX for a so-called threat to public safety. But is it true that the FAA is being unfair to SpaceX, especially since they did all the paperwork right? Let's find the accurate answer in today's TechMap episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. On September 20th, SpaceX shared the image of Crew Dragon Freedom arriving at Pad 40 in Florida ahead of NASA's Crew 9 launch. This is an atypical mission in NASA's commercial crew program, given that it takes charge of both a regular and rescue mission, and it will launch with only two astronauts aboard, but return with four. As scheduled to lift off Thursday, September 26th, Freedom will ferry NASA astronaut and U.S. Space Force Commander Nick Haig and Roscosmos astronaut and mission specialist Alexander Gorbanov instead of the usual four four astronauts at a time. Crew Dragon's other two seats will hold mass simulators. That will leave room for two other NASA astronauts, Butch and Suni, who are stranded on the ISS, to return due to being unable to fly home on their originally assigned spacecraft. On June 5th, Boeing's troubled Starliner spacecraft carried NASA astronauts Suni Williams and Butch Wilmore toward the ISS on the first-ever crewed mission. The Starliner's crewed flight test was originally planned as the capsule final test before entering regular service. The test should have been completed in 2017, but was delayed to 2024 due to numerous delays, including issues with the parachute harness and flammable tape on the wiring. Once Boeing had up to seven years to prepare, the mid-2024 voyage should have been perfect. But ironically, the troubles continued. Both Calypso's ascent and descent revealed serious propulsion system problems, and NASA said it had no regrets after making the decision to let Starliner return to Earth empty. Starliner then returned empty to Earth on September 6th, and Butch and Suni will be staying on the ISS until February 2025 to return on SpaceX's Crew-9 spacecraft. During that time, on the ground, investigation will continue into the causes of Starliner's issues and how that will affect future Starliner flights. NASA is determined to certify Boeing-made spacecraft, and the FAA also doesn't want to disrupt that process. Maybe that's why while FAA leadership was looking to attack SpaceX for petty issues, they ignored the real safety issues at Boeing for a while. It makes both Elon Musk and the space community confused a lot. Talking about SpaceX's recent letter to Congress, Elon wrote, The FAA leadership spends their resources attacking SpaceX for petty matters that have nothing to do with safety, while neglecting real safety issues at Boeing. This is deeply wrong and puts human lives at risk. NASA deemed the Boeing capsule unsafe for astronaut return, turning, out of necessity, to SpaceX. Yet instead of fining Boeing for putting astronauts at risk, the FAA is fining SpaceX for trivia. Enough is enough. The FAA's behavior appears to be a classic example of regulatory injustice against two separate companies. First is a legacy company, Boeing, which has marked its footprint since the dawn of U.S. space exploration and, of course, has a huge influence in Washington. The second is a so-called new kid in the block, representative of the new space staying apart from the old space generation. However, let's look at things from another perspective, particularly that of the FAA. Is it true, unfair? The U.S. National Agency explained, For commercial crew missions like Starliner's crew flight test mission, crew safety is NASA's responsibility, not the FAA's. The FAA partners with NASA during these missions and is responsible for public safety through its commercial space licensing process while NASA is responsible for crew safety, the FAA notes. To put it simply, we can understand that the FAA considers the Starliner crewed test flight was not really a regulatory problem. It is a commercial contract between the customer, NASA, and the vendor, Boeing. As an independent, informed customer looking out for its own safety, NASA chooses to take the risk of launching its astronauts on Starliner, but NASA subsequently chooses to take the safe option of letting Starliner return uncrewed. There was no FAA or anybody stepping in to tell NASA that they are or aren't allowed to use Starliner. Putting aside the fact that NASA is a government agency, this mimics the way a libertarian free market works, where when those trades are voluntary, when nothing is preventing people from making trades or forcing people to make trades, that results in a free market, which makes everyone healthier, wealthier, more peaceful, and more technologically advanced. 
In addition, currently, the FAA's ability to enact safety regulations for spaceflight participants is limited by a learning period established in 2004, which has been extended multiple times and is set to expire on January 1, 2025. The regulatory moratorium named Learning Period allows the commercial space industry to grow without the burden of extensive FAA regulations on participant safety. Therefore, the FAA does have limited authority to regulate crew safety to ensure they can operate the vehicle and not harm the public. Although the FAA's decisions are based on current regulations, in fact, it doesn't mean they are innocent. Strikingly, if they really care the public safety, they should have had more inspectors on the ground at Boeing fact and the factory of its primary supplier. As a result, there would not be terrible accidents on Boeing's airplanes, as you know. Similarly, die in aviation just like die in rocketry. If robust safety regulations and enforcement to protect lives are also applied for the development phase of the Boeing Starliner spacecraft, certainly two NASA astronauts would not be stranded for so long. If the FAA really cares, they should hold Boeing to the same standards they have applied to SpaceX, yet they don't. So how about you? Do you think the FAA is acting unfairly in regulating SpaceX and Boeing? Say yes if you agree. Anyway, under the takeover of the new Boeing CEO, Kelly Ortberg, Boeing has shown a positive sign. One of the first and foremost things he does is to purge the incompetent personnel. First of all is Ted Colbert, former CEO of Boeing Defense, Space and Security, one of the aerospace giants' subdivisions. Steve Parker, the unit's chief operating officer, would assume Colbert's responsibilities until a replacement is named at a later date. At this critical juncture, our priority is to restore the trust of our customers and meet the high standards they expect of us to enable their critical missions around the world, Ortberg said. Working together, we can and will improve our performance and ensure we deliver on our commitments. Parker was brought in to shore up industrial leadership and help fix loss-making programs with a new operating management role just under two years ago. He had previously headed Boeing's bomber and fighter programs as well as its St. Louis defense plants. Historically, Boeing held a superior reputation for our ability to manage programs, and we need to ensure it remains a key differentiator for us in the future," Ortberg wrote in a separate email to employees. Ortberg added he had learned more about the future investments we need to make to be competitive and define our future, as well as about some of the more near-term hurdles engineering faces with first-time quality and execution. Colbert, who joined Boeing in 2009 after working at Citigroup and Ford Motor, took the reins at Boeing Defense and Space in April 2022 after the prior head of defense was ousted. The news comes less than two weeks after Boeing's Starliner capsule returned to Earth uncrewed, wrapping up a troubled test flight to the International Space Station. The heavy loss of Boeing's space business has burned a big hole in the company's pocket, with $1.6 billion in overruns since 2016. Colbert Colbert's departure comes at a time when Boeing seeks to manage cash flow amid labor disputes and operational disruptions by announcing furloughs of thousands of white-collar workers coincides with a significant strike involving over 32,000 workers from the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers. On January 5th, a new Alaska Airlines 737 MAX 9 suffered a mid-air emergency after it was missing four key bolts, causing the door to blow off off at about 16,000 feet over Oregon during a trip to California, forcing an emergency landing. The incident led the FAA to order a temporary global grounding of Boeing 737 MAX 9 planes for immediate inspections. In July, Boeing agreed to plead guilty to a criminal fraud conspiracy charge and pay at least $243.6 million after breaching a 2021 deferred prosecution agreement. The government said Boeing knowingly made false representations to the FAA about key software for the 737 MAX. The FAA has tightened oversight of Boeing and barred it from expanding production of the MAX beyond. 38 planes per month until it makes significant quality and safety improvements. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.